The 5 o'clock Eyewitness News, ahead of its time, today on Channel 7. The Richard Simmons Show, tomorrow morning at 9. Geraldine, how nice to see you. My dear, Nancy, how lovely to be in this house again. Well, it's lovelier because you are here. Come in, Thank come you. in. Uh, Raven isn't with you. No, I'm so sorry she couldn't make it. Is she feeling all right? Oh, she's fine. As a matter of fact, I haven't seen Raven look so well in quite a long time. Well, she did have that little holiday. If you can call it that. But apparently the health and beauty spas can do the job. Yeah, I suppose so, if you make the effort. And if you have the willpower. <laughs> oh, my dear. Raven has that in abundance. Willpower. Of a rather peculiar sort. <laughs> May I get you a drink? Mike, I could use a double bourbon on the rocks. But what I'll have is a glass of white wine. Nancy? <laughs> the same, thank you, honey. Sounds as if you had a hard day. Yes, Nancy and I have been wondering what life with Raven must be like these days. I can't imagine that she's a barrel of laughs in her present state of mind. My dear, you're quite right. Oh, she's taking care of her physical self beautifully, but her mind is in a shambles. Don't ask me to explain Raven's logic. All I can say is she has put great faith in all her old strategies. It was really nice of you to come to dinner with me, Derek. I felt so alone these past few months. Come on, you've got Geraldine to lean on. You've got a tower of strength in that woman. Yeah, she's got one big flaw. She's not a man. That's right. Excuse me. You do need a man to lean on. Well, you know, you get different kinds of comfort from a man as opposed to a woman, and I need all the comfort I can get. You've been through a lot of kinds of hell in these past few months. I know that. But I gotta tell you something. You sure don't look the worst for wear. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Now, that wouldn't have meant half as much coming from Geraldine. So what you're really saying is you're starved for male flattery. Well, that's not really being fair. I mean, I just wanted to talk to someone who knows me and understands me. <laughs> I would think that might be a disadvantage. You'd be much better off with somebody who doesn't know and understand you. Derek, there was no one that I wanted to see or talk to more than you. Does that mean you want to talk about police business? We could have done that in my office. No, this is personal. It's between you and me. Raven, there is no such animal as you and me, and there hasn't been for a very long time. I know that, Derek. It's not what I meant. It's just that, well, I've been thinking about what we've both been suffering, and, well, we've both been through such a terrible, terrible loss. Edge of Night is brought to you by Cascade, the dishwasher detergent that leaves dishes and glasses virtually spotless, and by April Fresh Downy, America's favorite fabric softener. Uh, Nora? Yes, Aunt Jane? I know a guest shouldn't be critical, dear, but these towels don't feel as soft as they used to. But I used a fabric softener. You tried a drier brand. Downy softens better. And I love that fresh smell it had before. You should have used Downy. Only Downey rinses in April freshness, and Downey softens through and through. Not just here and there, like dryer brands. And Downey helps rinse out static cling. My, these towels! Yes, Aunt Jane? They're softer now, and they smell fresh. Now, what happened? I'm using Downey again. She sure noticed the difference. I do love visiting here. Oh, thanks. Deep Downey softness, a noticeable improvement. Every day, people face the moment of truth. The moment they decide if their dishwasher detergent did the job. If I have to rewash the glasses. Or didn't quite do the job. Spots, I have to rewash the glasses. That moment when. There better not be spots on the glasses. There are spots on the glasses. Try Cascade. See, most detergents can leave drops that spot, but Cascade's sheeting action leaves glasses virtually spotless. That Cascade moment of truth. Look at that shine. Now that's beautiful. For virtually spotless dishes, try Cascade and make that moment of truth your moment of glory. You did great, Cascade. 
Uh, speaking of Calvin, here's Calvin. Uh, hi, Calvin. Hi, Sid. How's it going? Oh, no use complaining, right? Hey, how's that big, handsome partner of yours doing? I haven't seen him <laughs> around much. Damien, well, he's, uh, he's on a special assignment. I guess they're keeping him pretty busy. Has that got anything to do with Jody's kidnapping? No, I wouldn't be the one to ask. I'm not on that team. Hello, Dee Dee. Hello, Calvin. Uh, well, listen, personally speaking, I hope that they grab the guy that, uh, took Jody, because, uh, for we've got enough to worry about these days, what with the old-fashioned type criminals. Now we've got all these, uh, international terrorists and bomb throwers and people like that to deal with. Yeah, yes. Uh, listen, um, would, uh, you two like something to drink to start with? Uh, nothing for me, Sid, thanks. I, uh, wouldn't mind a nice cold beer. Right. Nice cold beer. Well, Calvin, this had better be good. You've been coming up with some pretty clever ploys lately to keep me on a string. Oh. Uh, actually, Dee, the fact is that this is one of those times when I would really rather not be sitting on the opposite side of the table. Well, now that's a new approach. Look, um, you aren't gonna like much of what I have to say. As a matter of fact, I don't think it's going to do much for my case. Calvin, would I, you please just get to the point? It's about your brother. I think that he is headed for some trouble, and I wanted you to be forewarned. Calvin, did you know that my brother is now gainfully employed, that he has a legitimate job? Oh, yes, now that I know. And do you know how hard it is to get a job these days? And my brother already has several strikes against him. First of all, he's young. He is black. He has no skill. And he's an ex-con. Okay, okay. Now, doesn't that make you wonder just a little bit how it was so simple for him to just run out and get on a payroll? What are you getting at, Calvin? Did he tell you where he was working, Dee Dee? Yeah. I didn't think so. He said that he was working at, at some big company as an apprentice, a gopher. He's working at Lucky Salvage, Dee Dee. He's working for Eddie Lorimer. And you know what he's about. All right, so he's working for a company that Eddie Lorimer owns. That doesn't mean that he's doing anything illegal. Dee Dee, parolees aren't allowed to work there, Calvin, didn't you? he's not on parole. He is free and clear, and he can work anywhere he likes, and I don't like what you're implying. Implying? I'm, I'm merely trying to warn you. Well, thank you, okay? Thank you for your great concern. You mind explain to me what all this is about? I'm only trying to be helpful, you know. Well, thank you again for your help, Calvin. But I can take care of my own brother. Why don't you just take care of your wife? Good job. Hello there. Hello, Sydney. Uh, Spencer, I don't think you know Sydney. She owns this place. Hello. Nice to see you again. People call me Sid. Uh, how about this booth? Is it all right? All right. Thank you. Can I get you folks something to drink? I'd like an old-fashioned. I'd like a brandy and soda, please. On second thought, your old-fashioned's never quite right, as I remember. I think I'll have some white wine. I'll see if I can get that right. You two don't seem to be the best of friends, Nora. She's just the jealous type. Speaking of jealous, what about Gunther? I suppose he'll be a little upset that you invited me out. <laughs> He's taking care of an errand for Mr. Whitney. Well, just the same. Let's not keep this too leisurely. I don't like the idea of leaving the new help alone in the house. Well, I thought we could talk better away from the place. Talk about what? I mean, if you're still curious about what happened in Switzerland, what happened about Jefferson Brown, read the newspapers, read the magazines. The whole story's been covered. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody wrote a book about it sometime. Well, they're not writing about her, Raven Whitney. She's calling herself Raven Alexander now. It's her maiden name. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I think it's incredible. The way he's taken everything away from her. He didn't take anything that didn't belong to him. Well, 
I know that lady pretty well, and I think she's a pretty tough cookie. I don't think she's going to stand by for this. What do you think she can do about it? Well, she's a very attractive woman, and I think he thinks so, don't you? <laughs> Is that why you invited me here, a little backroom gossip? Why don't you try that out on the new help, Nora? I'm just curious. All right. I'm going to satisfy your curiosity just this once. You can forget about it. Raven hasn't got a chance. Matter of fact, Mr. Whitney's very interested in another woman. Oh, Valerie Bryson, yes, she's very good looking, but if I had to put my money on somebody... This isn't a horse race, Nora. Look, don't get me wrong. I have Mr. Whitney's best interest at heart, too, just like you. I'm sorry. It's true. You taught me a very big lesson, Spencer. You taught me it pays to be loyal. And it certainly paid you very well. The Crazy Daisy Shave. When you shave with Daisy, you go a little crazy. All you want to show are your legs. All you want to show is your smooth, sleek skin. Your Crazy Daisy Shave. Now buy the Daisy Twin Pack or new Economy 4 Pack. And Gillette will send you half your money back. Daisy Twin Blade Shave so nice. Your legs feel like you've shaved them twice. So pick yourself a Daisy and go a little crazy. Show your Crazy Daisy Romance can take you many places, but only so far. Beautiful as it is, it has limits. But desire starts where romance leaves off and bursts into something beyond. Something Silhouette Books now captures in a startling new series about love. Silhouette Desire. Beyond Romance, where the possibilities are limited only by your imagination. Silhouette Desire. Incredible. What is it? So many different things on this list, and some of them are ridiculously expensive. Why would it cost over $1,000 to fix an apron? Oh, that's not the kind of apron you wear. That's the front of the stage. We have some lumber we have to fix up. How in the world did you have time to prepare this list? I didn't. A friend of mine did. The late Hector Wilson. He did it a couple of months ago, and we thought we'd be moving in here to work. I see. I suppose that means that everything has gone up in price since then. Yeah, you can count on old inflation. <laughs> Buffy, um, Mrs. Revere, I want you to know that that list is very expensive, and I don't expect oh, you to... Oh, be quiet, young man. I'm trying to concentrate. Uh, where are those other things? You mean the uh, resumes and the pictures? Oh, right there. Yes. Uh, this one is adorable. Um... Mrs. Revere, we, we talked about how difficult it was to put an acting company together, if you recall. And I can't, I won't, cast people you think are adorable. Um, and if that's a condition for our working together, no thank you. Oh, don't be so impetuous. Actually, I think you have a far greater problem. What would that be? Well, it seems to me that putting together a whole new company will take you longer than making all these props and things. Yes, it's true. I've thought about that. It's kind of like putting a good athletic team together. <laughs> Are you sure you have the time? Well, not really. Mr. Whitney gave us this theater for a year to try and make it a, a profitable organization, and it's going to take all of a year to do that. Well, why don't you start with a road company? You could produce the play and use whatever local people you need, and then when the theater is finished, you just move in. At least the theater would be operational sooner. Wow, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> My dear boy, it's the only sensible thing to do. I'm sure you can book a traveling company with so many good-looking, virile young men. Don't um, you agree? I'm not sure that and that's And if you gonna... do agree, I would be happy to advance you, say, $25,000 for improvements. That seems to be the bottom of the list. You'd be willing to do that? Yes, I would. Well, what do you think? Mrs. Revere, you're an angel. <laughs> I may, or I may not be an angel. But you can call me Buffy. Buffy? 
You got yourself a deal. Uh -huh. <laughs> bravo, bravo. How did you get in here? What? I said, how did you get in here? Oh, uh, I have a key. Yeah, I have uh, keys to all the places that Mr. Whitney owns. Uh, that's okay with you, isn't it, uh, Mr. Diedrichson? Uh, no, it's not, but I'll talk to your boss about it. Yeah, well, you see, I always look after Mr. Whitney's interests, so um, I thought I would come down and look after this one. I didn't realize you were rehearsing a love scene. <laughs> Who is this large, fearsome gentleman, James? Uh, the name is uh, Gunther Wagner, honey. Uh, listen, I'm terribly sorry to have interrupted your necking audition. <laughs> My dear sir, I would be offended if you weren't so big and attractive. Oh. Darling, I must be running along. I'll be in touch with you in a day or two about our business arrangement. Okay. Thank you, brother. <laughs> yes. Bald is beautiful. Oh. Bye, darling. <laughs> hey, who is that, anyway? Huh? It's Buffy Revere. She's a wealthy patron of our Whitney Theater Company. Uh -huh. Is there anything else you'd like to know? Well, I'd like to know uh, everything. <clears throat> Tell me, uh, if you're going to be taking care of Mr. Whitney's interests, then what does Spencer Varney do? Oh, he looks after the numbers, and I look after the figures. Yes, I, uh... I think I'm going to be coming down here quite often, Mr. Diedrichson. Now, just to help out, you understand. <laughs> mm. uh -huh. If only you could hear what people think. Like to be her pen pal. Nice. Too bad he's scratching his head. Could be Dan. Sure get a lot of junk mail. <laughs> that little itch could be showing people you have dandruff. But Head & Shoulders handles that itch. So all that shows is hair that's soft and shiny clean. Well, 3A? Oh, 3B. <laughs> Try Head & Shoulder Shampoo and show off your hair, not the itch of dandruff, in regular and conditioning formulas. Procter & Gamble is hoisting the sales for savings with terrific money-saving coupons. Look in this Sunday's paper for these coupons and redeem them for big savings on many of your favorite Procter & Gamble products. And there's a lot more. I can't tell you exactly what, but this boat is a hint. So check newspapers or store displays for complete details and get ready to sail for savings. After a tough practice, you probably think I use a deodorant soap. No way. I made a break from deodorant soaps a long time ago. A clean break with ivory. Wow. Ivory's a basic natural soap to give you an honest clean. You see, ivory doesn't mix up clean with heavy perfumes or deodorant. Ivory's made to do just one thing. Get me as clean as I can be. That's an honest clean. Make a clean break with Ivory. No soap can get you cleaner than that, no matter how hard you try. Apparently, this hidden room in Mr. Key's bookshop had been there since the place was built. Yes, he was a revolutionary himself, and he used the room to hide compatriots who might have been in trouble. Good heavens, I didn't know such things went on outside of spy novels. <laughs> Reality is often much stranger than fiction, Geraldine. At any rate, this room had not been used until these two young people abducted Jody and held her prisoner there. Well, thank heavens she wasn't harmed. You know, I've become very fond of that young lady. Yes. Jody survived the experience, but as you may have heard, one of the kidnappers didn't. The girl who called herself Viva was killed by the police during the rescue attempt. But they caught the other one, the man. Oh, uh, Mike, I don't think Geraldine knows the latest. What do you mean? That young man escaped once again. But I had understood that he'd been hurt. He escaped from Monticello General in spite of the fact that there was a guard at the door. We're convinced that someone in the hospital, possibly even a member of the regular hospital staff, assisted in the escape. No, it was the nurse. The guard said that a nurse took him down to X-ray. Obviously, there are more members in this political gang than we know about. You don't think he caused Jody any more trouble, do you? No, the police think that this Pietro will be too busy running. Ah, oh, the whole thing is a shocker. And to think, it all turned out to be nothing but mistaken identity. May I uh, refill your glass, Geraldine? Well, Mike, I don't usually have seconds. But why not? <laughs> I 
never really knew Jinx Avery. I just met her when she came to a restaurant where I was dining with Lance Halliday or Johnny Gentry. No, I know all about Johnny Gentry. Yeah, and then the second time I met her, was at Johnny's penthouse. When I actually, that was Buffy Revere's penthouse. But I thought it was his penthouse, and I thought she was his girlfriend, and she had a gun. Don't you see? They were all just play acting. I know that, but I thought she was going to kill him. She was a very good actress. Raven. Jinx meant you absolutely no harm. She was doing a favor for some friends. There was nothing for her to gain. And I'll tell you something else. She knew even then that she would never star in that production. Oh, Derek. See, that's why I wanted to talk with you, because I wanted to tell you that I forgive her. I bear her no ill will. Thank you. That means something for me to hear you say that. You know, when I saw her tombstone, I was so surprised because it said Jinx Avery Mallory, and I didn't even know you were married. Well, we weren't married for very long, but we had some very nice days. <sighs> it's so sad. Hey, come on now. No, no, I, I know how you feel because I know what it's like to lose somebody that you love. And I know you don't like me very much, and I don't blame you for that, but I just thought that maybe we could kind of comfort each other, you know? Dave, do me a favor, will you? Yeah, Kelly. Dee Dee left her purse over the table. Why don't you uh, hold on to it? I'm sure she'll be back asking for it soon. Be glad to. Thanks a lot. Well, 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 if it isn't the future police commissioner. How you doing there, Sergeant Stoner? Troy, you gotta watch out for this guy. He'll arrest you if you step on the grass, even if you own the lawn. Get a table, Troy. I want to say hello to somebody. Take care. See you, Sergeant. So, how's the best-looking saloon keeper in Monticello doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. Nice to see you back here again. We must be doing something right. Hey, I only come back to see you. Tell you what, why don't you give me a quickie drink here at the bar? This way I can hang out a while. <laughs> you name it, you got it. What's your pleasure? I'll tell you what, <clears throat> why don't you make me one of those fancy drinks, you know, uh, something like a Brandy Alex. You know, you used to shake it. This way uh, I can keep an eye on you. You get what I mean? How about a malted? You're cute. You're really cute, you know what I mean? By the way, you, uh, just missed your sister, you know, she just left. No kidding. You know, I had heard that you were, uh, working for Eddie Larimer, but I wasn't aware that you were drinking buddies. My boss and I are here to have a drink and talk business, that's all. Oh, see. Well, that was quick. I mean, you only, uh, had this job, what, a uh, couple of days now? I guess he recognized executive talent when he saw it. Uh-huh. A regular Horatio Alger, huh? Who? Uh, skip it. Tell me something, Troy. Exactly what do you do for this company? You see, man, I'm in, um, security. Security? Mm. Mm, I see. Yeah, that's, um, probably very important to a guy like Eddie. You know, I happen to know that, uh, most all of his security men carry a piece. Now, you wouldn't uh, be carrying any heavy metal, would you, Troy? <laughs> Me? I mean, of course not. Oh, of course not. Hey, you got a license for the same thing? Hey. Hey, what's going on here? What do you think you're doing I here? I was just uh, asking the gentleman a question, Eddie, about a uh, license. Don't worry about it, Troy. I'll be out before the ink is dry. You know, if you haven't tried Tostitos brand tortilla chips, you should. Tostitos have the natural taste of lightly toasted corn. You can even see they're toasted. <laughs> and they're so thin and crispy. Tostitos are hard to resist. Amy, it's empty. But we like them. Who's we? <laughs> Oh, that's we. <laughs> Try Tostitos. They're lightly toasted for a natural corn taste from Frito-Lay. When summer brings itchy inflammation, like poison ivy, insect bites, and allergic rashes, scratching can lead to infection. So you need Caldecort Hydrocortisone Spray to stop your itch without touching your rash. cal de -Cort. Hydrocortisone Spray to stop your itch without touching your rash. Without a prescription, nothing. Nothing is more effective to help keep you from scratching your itch to infection than Caldecort. 
Countercourt with hydrocortisone. On Ryan's Hope. Just say the word and Novak is a dead man. If there's danger here, I'm not leaving. We'll face it together. It's coming from my past and it doesn't involve you. There's nothing about your life that doesn't involve me. Ryan's Hope. Right, that's uh, 4, 4, 7.30 tomorrow night. Okay, fine. See you then. Oh, Sid. Oh. Did, did you happen to see my purse? I think I left it here a little while ago. You sure did, honey. Oh, fortunately, though, it had police protection. Thanks. Uh, Lily, can I talk to you for a minute? Sure. Uh, something happened here just a few minutes ago, and I think you ought to know about it. Something about Calvin? Well, Calvin was involved, yeah, and so was your... Listen, Dee, the truth is that your brother was just arrested. Tr Wait, uh, Sid, what, what are you talking about? Well, uh, look, um, he walked in here with uh, <clears throat> Eddie Lorimer, and uh, listen, before I knew what was happening, uh, Calvin had his arms pinned back. Why? I don't know. There's something to do with a gun, honey. A license for a gun. That's that's all I can tell you. But Calvin did take him down to the police station. Thanks, Sid. Got one for you, Andy. Name's Troy Bannister. Uh, how do you spell that? Bannister, you know, like in the staircase. Oh, boy, I bet you made that up all by yourself, huh? The charge is carrying concealed weapon without a license. Yeah, yeah. Will you give me a minute, huh? Oh, by the way, Galvin, did you get that uh, phone message? Wouldn't miss it. Well, uh, I was told you should call home. Call home, says who? No, never mind. Is that you? Yes, Calvin. It's your wife. And I'm home. Nair leaves legs smoother, longer than shaving. Cotton rubbed on both legs proves it. The Nair leg is smoother. If you dare go bear a Nair with aloe vera. New Nair with aloe vera and new fragrance Nair with baby oil. Nair. For smoother legs. Dad still comes in to help every day, no matter what. But when I saw he was having problems with his eyes, we went right to the Pearl Vision Center. I knew the doctor would check his eyes right. And you know, that made me feel better. After years of looking to those eyes for strength, well, I sure couldn't trust him to just any. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. Tonight, an evening with a belly dancer shakes things up for Mork and Mindy. And on Bosom Buddies, will Sonny and Henry get the picture when Kip and Amy get tattooed? Tonight on ABC's World News Tonight, Peter Jennings in West Beirut as war rages in Lebanon. The terrorists will not stay either in Beirut or in Lebanon. Plus, Nancy Reagan, she's changing her political image. ABC News, uniquely qualified to bring you the world. 42nd Street, Broadway's all-time musical hit. Some seats available this week. Call Telecharge 246-0730. This is Stormfield. Coming up for you on the 5 o'clock, Eyewitness News gas leaking in a Connecticut town. Officials say homes could explode and people are being evacuated. We'll have a live report and we'll have this. Central Park climbs above 90 and the carriage horses are ordered into the shade. All this is the head of the ASPCA says we could be seeing the end of an industry. I'm Tracy Egan. I'll have the report. Also a preview of tonight's Elton John concert and what could become New York's hottest selling beer. Join us at 5. Jensen! Sir. Ah, there you are. Doing my shirts? Obviously, sir. Using warm water? Naturally, sir. And dry bleach? Oh, no, sir. No. No, dry bleach works best in hot water. But when we switch to warm for colors and synthetics, 
we switched to Borotine. Did we? Borotine is specially made to clean and brighten in warm water. Perfection. Jensen, you're a one of a kind. Oh, no, sir. Borotine's one of a kind. I'm a treasure. When you switch to warm, switch to Borotine. That's Hollywood tomorrow at 7.30. This is Terry Blosser, the plaintiff.